whenever I choke, it makes me sneeze. Hey, so check this out. I'm not wearing a t-shirt or athletic wear. I'm wearing like a blouse, right? With nice tan lines. Um, it is Memorial Day and I'm not wearing my typical athleisure wear because I just uh, spoke at a local Memorial Day um, celebration, um, commemoration. Um, it was at the uh, cemetery where we had my husband's service and um, one of the funeral directors there is uh, is a friend. So it actually went really, really well. Um, I'm, happy, I'm really happy with, you know, the way I felt doing it, um, what I had to say. Um, so that went really well. I got a, really, a lot of really good feedback. There was almost like a, like a receiving line after a wedding of people coming up and talking to me. So that was really, really nice. But really the last two weeks, has been really wrapped up in Memorial Day. I wrote a blog um, and came up with the Sergeant Sam Memorial workout. So I've been like pushing that out. And then I had to write this speech. It was like a 12 minute or so speech. So just like a lot of heavy kind of stuff. Um, so I do have, I have two coaching calls this afternoon, but I think I just want to kind of have a decompression day. It's a million degrees. It's, it's 94. It's 12.15. It's 94 degrees. But I think it's supposed to be well over 100 today. Um, my mom just took me out to lunch right after um, the service. And it's in the same parking lot as Half Price Books. So I went in there for a little book therapy. Not that I like need therapy, but it's just, you know, a little self-care thing. Something that I know makes me feel good. And so I just picked up a few things. So I ended up finding, wouldn't be my choice edition necessarily, but a, a, like a seemingly brand new copy used edition of um, Adam Bede by George Eliot. And came in the middle of the book March recently, read this, and I just watched her non-spoiler review on it. I think in a comment too, she'd also told me that I would really enjoy it after having enjoyed Sil uh, Silas Marner. By the way, I was looking in the regular, so this was just with the like kind of mass market paperback section. In the regular literature area, I was looking for, you know, maybe a Penguin Class Classics edition or some other edition of Adam Bede. And the only George Eliot they had were like seven different editions of Silas Martyr. The one George Eliot I've already read. So, but I was happy to pick this up. And then um, to add to my. Um, Every Man's Library collection. I have the Return of the Navid. The turn, re, Return of the Navid. Oh my gosh. Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. Um, haven't read any Thomas Hardy yet, but I definitely will be. And I love not even necessarily having like all of an author in the same edition. That would that's nice when that happens too. But when I find a classic that is in in addition that I have other editions of books in, if that makes sense. So like Penguin English Library or the Penguin, um, you know, Clockbound Classics or English Classics um, or the Everyman's Library. It's nice for them like all to be together on the shelf together. And then my love for Louise Penny, I found the next book um, I have to read is A Better Man. And the next book after that is All the Devils, are here as a hardback for $13.99. So um, I went with it. I think there's only one more out after this one before I'm gonna have to actually wait for the books to come out. But I'm really excited to go home and just like decompress and read. Um, hang out on the couch for a while until I have, I don't think I have a client call for like four hours. So. I can just chill and, uh, and decompress. Another thing about basically never wearing anything besides athleisure wear and t-shirts and you know, wearing an actual shirt is that uh, I have to wear a real bra. And based on like the neckline strap situation, not just a real bra, but a strapless bra. So I'm excited to get home and get out of this. Um, it's very comfortable except for the strapless bra situation. So I'll be getting into that at leisure wear as soon as I get home. Also, baseball. Baseball, books, comfy clothes. It's a good day. Now we're talking. Time to go chill.
So I decided to come into my co-working space to do my calls and get a little bit of work done. But I did bring O Pioneers by Willa Cather with me. So I might do a bit of that. But I just hard to, I feel like find it hard to get into work mode when I'm at home. So I just feel a little bit, I don't know, more more present. Be a better coach when I'm at work, like at the actually out eh, actually at the office rather than sitting on my couch. Whoops! Alright. Check in later. working space we have two paddle boards that we get to use uh, so we get free paddle board access and then there's like a little ramp that goes right down into the water um, that's an easy easy walk across the parking lot to get to so um, I had like 45 minutes in between clients so I just sent up my follow-up email and grab the board the only thing was because it's the office isn't open like officially today we use an app to get in and out of the door um, so I had to have my phone with me. So I'd never taken my phone with me out on the water. So I went into the lost and found um, like drawer and found some Tupperware <laughs> and my phone just fits and this little Rubbermaid thing. So I have it like in that secured on the little like bungee cord deal on the front of the paddle board to keep my phone safe. But it is gorgeous out here and yeah, it's like, when I was pulling up, my my car said it was 104 degrees outside, so feels good. I've got I've got my legs in the water at the moment, but um, just being on the water feels a lot cooler. There's a nice breeze, and it just feels amazing. Wish you guys could join me out here. Well, hi guys. It is Tuesday evening, about 8:30, and um, I have had a pretty crap day. Uh, I only just got home, like half an hour ago maybe um i <clears throat> kind of shoved something in my face just had some yogurt and berries basically for dinner talked to my parents for a minute and then just like got ready for bed and here i am um i don't know if it's like spillover anxiety from memorial day and just everything that went into all the things i did from related to more memorial day this year and if i was like uh, I'm a good stuffer and I often stuff without realizing that I'm stuffing, you know? So is this like spillover anxiety from Memorial Day um, or and or a combination of I'm going to be hosting a live event in July and like the planning and everything for for that um, live health and fitness retreat that is. Um, probably a combination of them, but I've just been basically hyperventilating most of the day. Um, my anxiety tends to like, I won't necessarily realize that I'm even like stressed about something. And then, um, usually it's my fingers will start to tingle. Um, and then that's like the physical symptom that I'm hyperventilating. Um, another one, I'll feel, I'll feel tightness in my chest and even in my abs, basically I'll feel like, um, like I'm constantly trying to flex my abs and I can't relax them. So that's what's basically been going on, um, off and on all day. Um, and doing physical things, doing something that completely takes me out of it. Like when I was training my client in person, that really helped. Um, I ended up going to the gym. Um, so I was fine, like during my workout, but kind of, you know, on the drive there, it's like five minutes between my gym and my office. You know, the drive both ways, the drive back was better than the way there. Um, yeah, <laughs> so just a rough day. <clears throat> I was really trying not to take a Xanax. Um, I did take one yesterday before my speech. I did not take one today. Um, I was trying to use my non-prescription coping method, coping methods. I mean, I survived it, right? So anyway, let's talk about books because this is what I've been looking forward to all day was 
getting my stuff done so I could come to this. So I'm still just very slowly creeping through At Home in Mitford by Jan Karen. This is the first in the, the Mitford series. Uh, yeah, the beloved Mitford series. That's what it's called. Father Tim. And <clears throat> um, at this point, it's really about Father Tim and this young boy, Dooley, who he's kind of um, come to take care of. Um, uh, mom, like no dad, mom is in a bad way and lives somewhere else. Grandpa's taking care of Dooley, but Grandpa is sick right now. And so Father Tim has kind of taken care of this uh, very rough around the edges um, young boy and then the other relationships with the people in this um, small town. Um, so that's kind of what's going on with that. And I'm just I'm just kind of dipping in and out of this one. And it's just like sweet. It's a really nice kind of like last thing to read before I go to bed. And then I'm about halfway through O Pioneers by Willa Cather. And um, Alexandra was the daughter. Uh, she's the youngest of three. She has two older brothers. And uh, their father had a farm in Nebraska. And um, like the, the land was for, was like just kind of becoming settled and turned into farmland. And, and basically what the farmers are finding out is that uh, this is really desolate land and it's really hard to actually farm here. And, um, uh, but her father who was a, a Swedish immigrant um, seemed to kind of have the best knack for it, like the best intelligence for the, the right way to do it. Um, and Alexandra really has that, um, that same kind of intelligence and, and knack for it that her brothers really didn't. And they're much more just kind of like the muscle and kind of do what they're told. And so their father really kind of groomed her to be the one to take over the family farm. And so we're watching now as she's doing that. And um, I really have no idea where this is actually gonna go. We, we had kind of skipped ahead um, the last part I read, we had skipped ahead. Does it say how many years? I don't know. Um, yeah, a while has a while has passed. Um, I think there might be a romance coming up. Uh, someone from her past revisiting. So that is going well and I'm very much enjoying when I'm um, in, uh, in that. Then completely different, I have The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the first in the Farseer tri trilogy. Um, I've had this for two or three years probably and finally decided to pick it up and um, really into it. Fitz is the bastard son of a prince. And basically we, we he had been, uh, he'd been with his mother, his mother could no longer care for him and he basically gets like dropped off. And it's like, hey, have the, have the prince take care of his bastard and there we go. And so I'm just to the point where he has his, he, his, um, uh, his, he's starting to be brought up now, kind of, uh, groomed as a, uh, someone with royal blood should be, um, as far as his, uh, his education, um, warfare, um, and some special skill that he's learning from, uh, an assassin. And so we've had hints of, uh, of this kind of somewhat magical kind of thing that he has um, as he's been growing up, but some skill, I think they keep calling it some, some skill that he has, but don't really know a lot about it yet. And so imagine we're gonna be getting more of that um, as he's training um, with, I believe his name is actually supposed to be Shade. It's spelled like Shade, but I think it's Shade. Um, so yeah, really, really enjoying this. It's a really nice, mix of it's um like a, like a really cool fantasy world with really really great writing and that's the thing that i'd really heard about robin hobb was um how great her prose is so i'm gonna do this i just figured out too i just found out from my mom that uh i don't have the kids tomorrow my sister is not working tomorrow normally i have the kids all day on wednesdays so i've been given the gift of time I will miss their adorable little faces, but um, I'll have more time to work on things that are stressing me out or relax or who knows what, maybe even read.
so at this point, um, Alexandra is 40. She has two older brothers and one younger brother. And the older brothers in particular, um, who have been working the land ever since they were, they were kids when their dad was still alive, is um, they're basically giving her a really hard time about the land. And she's the one that's kind of managed and made the decisions and made them as prosperous as they are. And so there's like two things kind of happening. And one is that uh, this this friend that has returned, there, you know, is some talk of maybe some romance and they're worried that one, it's it's like shameful and like embarrassing the idea of her getting married at 40. Um, and they're worried that it's he's after her money. Um, and then also that they have this perception of because it was even though the land is now uh, like the old homestead is now split up three ways, um, maybe four. I'm not sure if the younger brother has any of the land ownership or not. But anyway, the 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 older brothers feel like if she sold her land after she gets married, which she's not there's not even a proposal yet, but um, that they're due that land uh, because they're the they're the males so interesting um i know i have an interesting lighting situation happening first of all but interesting take on like marriage and land ownership and and gender roles there um i'm kind of up and down on this book there are times when i get like like the last chapter i was just like kind of bored um when a lot of kind of the dialogue but the descriptions are so good, and I just want to read this little bit of this next chapter. Winter has settled down over the divide again, the season in which nature recuperates, in which she sinks to sleep between the fruitlessness of autumn and the passion of the spring. The birds have gone. The teeming life that goes on down in the long grass is exterminated. The prairie dog keeps his hole. The rabbits run shivering from one frozen garden patch to another and are hard put to find its find frost-bitten cabbage stalks. At night, the coyotes roam the wintry waste, howling for food. The variegated fields are all one color now. The pastures, the stubble, the roads, the sky are all the same leaden gray. The hedgerows and trees are scarcely perceptible against the bare earth, whose slaty hue they have taken on. The ground is frozen so hard that it bruises the foot to walk in the roads or in the plowed fields. It is like an iron country, and the spirit is oppressed by its rigor and melancholy. One could easily believe that in the dead landscape, the germs of life and fruitlessness were extinct forever. So it's like passages like that that makes me really, really enjoy this. I really do like the character um, of Alexandra, and I'm really interested to find out where this goes. But I do have to admit that the, the dialogue sometimes just kind of bores me, I guess. <laughs> It's Saturday now. I'm kind of on a lunch break. I'm at my friend's coffee shop. Coffee shop. Um, burger, tots, and beer, followed by coffee. Proceeding more work, basically. Um, so I'm basically I'm making the sales page right now for this live event I'm going to be having in July. And when you have to copyright and you're not a copywriter, it doesn't go very fast. So that's kind of what um, I'm doing. But um, as I've talked to you about the terrible anxiety I've been having this week, I stopped by Ruby's Books um, before I went and got food and picked up Think Like a Monk, like Jay Shetty. And first of all, like the genetic roulette to get have like dark skin and dark hair and blue eyes, it's not fair. Like um, the actor that plays Dr. P not Pierce. The guy from Grey's Anatomy, I can't remember what his name is, but dark skin and blue eyes, hello. So coffee is in hand now. My, ow, I just burnt myself. If you wanna get me some coffee. Americano with oat milk is my typical order. Otherwise, I'm just some straight drip coffee. I'm not fancy. Okay, book club next Friday. We're meeting to talk about Jane Eyre and it'll be the first book club I'm attending in person in like a really long time. And I've read Jane Eyre twice. I've been listening, re-listening to the audiobook of it, uh, the Audible original version by Tandy Newton, or performed by Tandy Newton. As I was getting toward the end of it, like, I won't give spoilers, but, you know, Jane Eyre takes place basically in three locations. 
So as we're getting toward the end of her time at the third location, I will say, I really wanted to be reading it physically. And so I pulled out my copy of it, which is kind of funny because I had, from the first time I read it a few years ago, I had all these um, like little flag post-it note thingies in it. And so it's always interesting to go back when you annotate books or like flag books like that. It's always interesting to go back and see what you, you know, what you commented on it. And I love annotating books because I feel like it's like having a conversation with the book and even a conversation with yourself. Ow, this is really hot. Like having a conversation with yourself the next time you read that book or, or flip through that book or something. So anyway... Um, and then hopefully, wow, somebody is smoking weed around here. It is strong. It's legal, but it's strong. Um, anyway, and then I really hope to, I need to like carve out some time to finish O Pioneers today. And I'm back at the office. It is really cool little, uh, like outdoor workout space right here. I have a pull-up bar with, uh, put my book down with rings. You can do cool stuff on it. I train people out here and we have like, we have some weights inside and I have some other kettlebells and bands and stuff like that that I use to train people. But we have this pretty cool little space and it's always shady back here. It looks really bright, but it's actually shady back here. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go inside and get back to work. So we have uh, what I call the good ice here. It's mostly melting, but let me see if I can give you a sense of the crunch, like the sound that it makes when you chew it and see if you can like know the type of ice I'm talking about. <coughs> I will get it. Whenever I choke, it makes me sneeze. I don't know what that's about. <clears throat> My grandpa used to do that too. Okay, let's see if I can do that again without choking. Swallow the water first. It's like these little nuggets that are like just formed together to form an ice cube. And it doesn't take any like tooth power to to actually crunch it it's just so satisfying and we have this little machine in the kitchen there it has the filtered water and then the ice that comes out of there oh, it's so good <clears throat> it was worth the choke <laughs> and the sneeze so i have like 30 pages left in o pioneers and toward the last quarter or so of the book now um alexander's younger brother emil has become more of a, a part of the story and he kind of has his own plot line a little bit. And like a, a really dramatic thing is kind of happening. And I have um, Ambient Worlds on, uh, Low Florian. It's, I think it's a new, a newish one. And it's like really dramatic. It's like the perfect soundtrack. Um, although, I mean, Nebraska and Middle Earth, a little different, but the, the, uh, the tension, <laughs> the tension is, is building and it's certainly appropriate for, for what's going on in the story. All right, let's have a therapy session, shall we? Okay, so it's like, I don't know, an hour since I last talked to you and I have like 15 pages left, which means I think I read about 15 pages. Mostly what I've been doing since I got home this evening, after I took, I took dinner, put some groceries away, uh, eat the dinner while watching some uh, some YouTube. So what I'm trying to get at is that one of the things that I did while I wasn't reading was you know I was screwing around on on YouTube on Facebook and Instagram, and I wrote an Instagram post about basically like for dinner I had salmon and Brussels sprouts. Pretty typical like healthy dinner. So my point in telling you that is I'm having this revelation about 
the way that I just spent my time this evening and how I will feel, and I have been feeling bad about myself recently for the way I've been spending my time, um, particularly like when I'm not working. So I would love to be reading way more than I'm reading, but then I get sidetracked by Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all of these distracting other things. Sometimes it's just watching TV. Um, and often it's often it's baseball. It's baseball season. So in the evenings, I'm um, typically I'll be watching the game and then like reading definitely between innings um, or like pitching changes and sometimes even between pitches. <laughs> um, like um, just kind of somewhat listening, reading, looking up at the game. Okay. So, but my point is like if I took that same perspective or that's yeah, that same perspective that I have now about my relationship with food into kind of, I guess, productivity. Um, I don't know, like my, I don't really have a conclusion here. I'm just, I'm just comparing the two, I guess. And in a recent therapy session, one thing that my therapist was pointing out was that I'm too hard on myself and I need to give myself a break and not hold myself to such a high standard because basically then I get disappointed and frustrated myself when I spend an evening screwing around on the gram instead of doing the thing that I actually want. But then it, then I'm like, but I actually want to be reading. So like, where's the, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, my head's just all sorts of messed up right now. And I feel like a lot of the answer just comes to put down your freaking phone and open a book. I don't know. Or maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Do you have these kind of existential productivity, leisure time issues as well? <sighs> okay, it's like, it's late for me. It's, it's just after 11. Um, so, and I'm not actually that tired. So hopefully I will actually finish this book and then not touch my phone for the rest of the night. I'm going to hit stop recording and then I'm going to literally toss my phone over to a chair that's over there. Um, so I have to actually get out of bed in order to get it. Good night. And you can just send me the bill for this session. Thanks. Good morning. I did it. I finished O Pioneers last night. Um, I don't think I mentioned, by the way, this is my booktube spin book. Um, and I had just picked this up in my local used bookstore, The Bookworm. And I think I had, when I saw it, I had recently heard someone talking about Willa Cather. And then I saw, I saw these books, or this book, and, um, and picked it up. And... Um, I really love her writing, um, especially towards the end. There were some really like where not that really pulls you out of the story, but just moments where like, damn, girl can write. I have to say that the story in and of itself, I wasn't like super compelled to like, it wasn't drawing me back to it. I wasn't, it wasn't a book that I was thinking about when I wasn't reading, um, and I think I mentioned before, there were some bits of dialogue that, um, I guess this is the difference in the dialogue compared to her descriptive writing. There's quite a contrast. And so I was enjoying the writing much more when we were in more descriptive parts of the story as opposed to dialogue. But I really did like the relationships that, you know, we're seeing through the dialogue. Um, and particularly Alexandra and Emil, her younger brother. Um, also, I don't know if you ever do this. I, I had kind of gotten out of the habit of this. But I love when you, f when you finish a book, like you read the last page, then go back to the first page. And sometimes there's kind of like a mirroring, mirroring or something. Um, other times it's just like kind of a nice reminder of like where the story started. And so I did that. And I had actually completely forgotten about the first scene and because in my head and I think I mentioned last night that toward the last quarter of, or so of the book we were having more of her younger brother Emil in the story and, and kind of more of his storyline 
But when I went back and I actually reread the first couple pages, I remembered that, like, he's the first character that we actually see. Um, um, and, and it's like, it starts off with the relationship between him and her. And he's like five and she's a few years um, older than him. So, um, you know, I would, I would maybe say like 3.5, you know, if I was to give it a star rating. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I, I'm glad I have experience with like Hathers, write, Hathers writing. If you know of any, um, I think Sweet Antonia, is that right? I think someone had mentioned that, that they read that book and I, I want to say like it's her favorite book, maybe in the last vlog or Friday reads. Um, so if you know any other Willa Catha, Cather, why can't I, can't I say that? Willa Cather books that you absolutely love and like the, the story is really going to be engaging. Um, let me know your recommendation. And then I think I'm going to wrap up this vlog. I am, oh, I'm going to have to move stuff. I set you up on a tower of books propped up by a water bottle. So I'm going to move that. But I just wanted a sneak peek. So I'm going to get back into The Assassin's Apprentice, which the story I am very much interested in and um, like compelled to get back to. And then I think I want to start Dominicana by Angie Cruz for Caribbean. Um, but I have family coming into town today. They're, they're on their way in route driving. Um, family coming from Arizona. So um, I'm not sure how much reading I'll, I will get done today. Um, but Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes. Yay! Both turtles are okay. There's one. And then the other one is over under this bush over here where we found him last time. There he is. Yay! They're both okay. I think it was Heidi commented she was worried about the other turtle. Tortoise. <laughs>